So then, Joe, yep. in front of us, we've got this board. Um, can you explain what we have on this board? Yeah, so what we're doing in this video is we're going to look at uh, a single phase contactor being controlled by a switch and how that is going to switch loads that are on a different circuit. So okay. in a previous video, we looked at the principle of how a three phase yep. uh, contactor works. The, like the three banks of lights. Exactly, yep. What we're gonna do now is look at a, a kind of a simplified version of that. Okay. So what we'll do is uh, we'll bring the camera in, we'll have a look at the components that we've got on the board and we'll have a chat about what they're all doing. Okay. So going through the components of this board then, Joe, we've got the consumer unit, mm -hmm. the consumer's unit. We have the, uh, there's a box here, what's inside this box? So this is where we've housed the contactor. Uh, so this will be a familiar box to people who've uh, worked regularly on site. It's a simple enclosure and inside there we've got our contactor installed uh, that is going to be doing uh, the switching of the lighting circuit okay. in this case. And through the, we've got a one-way switch here mm -hmm. and then we've got the two loads there, multiple loads there. Fantastic. So as we come back to the, uh, to, to the consumer's unit, we've got a six amp circuit breaker here. Yep. 230 volt coil. So this, this circuit breaker here is controlling a 230 volt coil. Sure. So that's going to the coil of the contactor. Right, so that circuit breaker is controlling the actual uh, pulling in mechanism part that okay. we looked at in the previous video, yeah? So from here it goes, the line conductor comes through here down mm -hmm. to the switch, through the switch, back up into the terminals A1 yep. of the contactor, and then back through A2 of the contactor Fantastic. to the neutral bar in here. So the idea being when we operate the switch, it closes that circuit, it generates the magnetic field in the coil, which operates the contactor. And we should actually hear a little bit of a crunk when we, when we that. turn that on, yeah? Okay, and then Fantastic. we have this circuit breaker here, mm -hmm. and that one is controlling, that's going through actual into the contactor. So okay. into the inside of the contactor, and then on the outgoing side of the contactor to the load. In Fantastic. this case, two lamps. So what we've actually got is these loads are on a completely different circuit to the control circuit that is actually going to operate them, correct? Okay, yeah. So, so this could be 10, 15, 20 mm -hmm. amps. Yeah. And we've got a little 10 amp switch here operated by a six amp circuit breaker. Fantastic. So you can control a big heavy load off just a simple switch. Great. So shall we, uh, shall we turn it on in a minute and have a look? I think so. Okay, then let's, let's get this circuit live then. So turn this RCD on and we'll just turn on the coil Sure. Circuit breaker at the moment. Yeah. So what we should now have is a situation where we can energize the coil, but because we've not got the lighting circuit turned on, the contacts will pull in and out, but these won't operate, correct? Okay, yeah, yeah. that's okay. So what we'll do is we, if we operate the switch, we should hear the contactor pulling in and out. So I'll try and do this quite gently so this the click of this doesn't overshadow it. So listen for the clunk. So that clunk is actually the contactor pulling in inside there. And if we turn it off again, we can hear it dropping out. So, so the, the control switch is operating the contactor. That's it. So the actual the, the contacts are coming into play. Yep. But obviously the power no power power is going over to the load, so nothing's coming on. Great. So Shall we power up the lighting circuit? Yep, okay, so I'll turn this circuit breaker on. Good stuff. You you have the honour in this case, Matt, yeah. Okay, so now again as Joe said about the, the this is operating the coil, and so we're gonna turn the you you'll hear the coil pulling in the contactor. In this in this instance now, the the power is being fed through the contactor and going through the actual load. Got two ammeters on here, Joe. Yeah. What, what's that about? So obviously this is something that we've constructed purely for the purpose of this video. Uh, this isn't something you generally see uh, in an installation. You you may see some uh, current measuring devices, uh, but this is purely for illustrative purposes. You can see we've got uh, two ammeters. They're measuring milliamps, so they're measuring thousandths of an amp. So okay. that's, that's zero to 300 milliamps. Fantastic. And then what we can see is that uh, this top uh, ammeter is measuring the current that's flowing through the coil. So this is the current being drawn by the coil, and the bottom one is the current being drawn by the actual lighting load itself. So if we have a look at and just compare these directly, what do you notice about the two values of current, Matt? So, so on this one, obviously, it's almost nothing at all. So the, the, the current that's being drawn through that circuit is just, it's, it's, it's not yeah. quite a zero, but it almost is. Yeah. Whereas on this one, it, it's over 250 milliamps. Yeah. So, so what we're doing is we're using a very, very small amount of current to control a relatively large amount of current. Yeah. yeah. And interestingly, it doesn't matter what the load is, mm -hmm. you could have 20, 30 amps on mm -hmm. there, that one wouldn't 
yeah. alter. That's Fantastic. The sort of and the benefit of that, of course, is that it means that we don't have to have really heavy duty switch gear for the actual functional switching part that people are going to interact with. So we haven't got a massive uh, 30 amp switch down here. If we're switching a big 30 amp load, that can be done remotely through the contactor. Okay. And we put two ammeters on that were both to the same scale. Yeah. So then you could see a good deflection on this one. Unfortunately, you just don't see a very good deflection on that one, but you can just about see it. Fantastic. So inside this container then we have the two pole contactor and we have the two ammeters on that on this um, here and here. So just to explain how the contactors are connected up. So from the first circuit breaker that controls the coil that comes down through here into the common of the switch down below and then back up through into the A1 terminal which is this one here and that you access it via this screw. So it's, it's, it says it's A1 terminal there. It then comes out of the A2 terminal underneath via the neutral conductor, which then comes back to the neutral bar. This is wired up slightly different to how you might do it normally because we have installed an ammeter in series with this circuit as well. So when, it, when the circuit comes down into the switch and then it comes back out of the switch into the ammeter and then back from the ammeter into the coil and then back through A2 to the neutral conductor. We then have the terminals at the top and the terminals at the bottom, the in and the outgoing. So you have terminals one and two, three and four. So we have the line conductor coming from the other circuit breaker that comes into terminal one and comes out of terminal two. Then it goes off to the light to the actual load. However, again, in this case, as it comes out of here, before it goes to the load in series, we've got another ammeter, and then it goes off to the load via the other output of the ammeter. So this contact is rated at 20 amps. It says it on here. Even though the load is only rated at about 250 milliamps, this is just to show how the contactor might look for, the, for this type of installation. As you can see on this one, we've also brought a neutral through the contactor. This is something that you may or may not do depending on the installation, but for this installation, because we've got a two pole contactor, we have also took the neutral through as well. And obviously we have our CPCs that goes to all of the um, exposed conductive parts. Guys, what's going on? Oh, hey guys. guys. Um, it's it's not what it looks like, mate. No, no, we've um, just been looking at this board here. Oh yeah, the one we're going to do a video on, are we? Yeah, 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 actually, we've already done yeah. the video. It's exactly what it looks like. Sorry, guys. Okay, so let's just summarise the video, Matt. Okay, and so it's, I think it's been a really good, um, a, a, a good demonstration of just how the contactor works. Yeah. I particularly like this bit. Yeah. There, because on the previous video we couldn't actually, or when we did the theory of it, we couldn't actually show you how much current was being drawn yep. through the coil. Yeah, which is really yeah. smart. And actually, we're going to use this rig in a future video to show the difference between the uh, current drawn by LED lighting uh, and traditional uh, filament lighting. Yeah. So that'll be good. Yeah, so, brilliant. should we, uh, guys? Do you want to come in and we'll we'll close the video down, mate? There we go. Do you want to kick us off? It's your line. Yeah. We hope their video has, has been, been some 